Hey guys, it's Bub here. 20 years ago today, Windows XP was officially released to the public. 20 years later, we'll be taking a look at the development history of Windows XP as well as a general overview of the operating system today. So without any further ado, let's get started. The first build of Windows XP we're taking a look at today is Windows Neptune build 5111. This build of Windows Neptune is a Milestone 2 build, and as of this video's creation, it is the only available build of Windows Neptune that we know of. This build was sent to developers on December 27, 1999, and most of the branding and feel of the entire operating system still says Windows 2000. For example, if we take a look at my computer, we can see that this still says Windows 2000, but it does include the updated build number. Once again, taking a look at Winver, it still does show Windows 2000. The only noticeable differences is, of course, in the start menu and on the boot up screen. Another big change in this build is, of course, the login screen. If we remember from Windows 2000, we just had that little box in the middle, but now we do have a totally redesigned login screen that really doesn't exactly mimic Windows XP's, it does show the core of the Windows XP login screen. Besides that, this is basically just a Windows 2000 clone. There's really no new things in this version. This is the earliest build of Windows XP that we have today. Another new feature inside of this build of Neptune is Fast Boot. Fast Boot is a new feature which is designed to speed up the system boot time. It can be enabled in the power options, but only if Windows Neptune is on a FAT partition. So in this case, I installed it to an NTFS partition. This feature did not make it to Windows XP, however this feature did make it to Windows 8, 8.1, 10, and 11, and is known as Fast Startup. So just overall, taking a tour of the operating system, the first thing that I noticed is actually VMware tools would not install. I tried pre-2000 and pre-Vista, and it would not install, so that is why we have the weird, funky colors here. So overall, just taking a look at this operating system, nothing is really new here. So let's move on to a more interesting version of Windows XP. This is the second build of Windows XP that we're taking a look at. This build is no longer called Neptune, this is now Windows Whistler build 2410. And as we can see there are some major differences with this build and of course Windows Neptune 5111. This build is a pre-beta 2 build of XP which was released to testers on January 4th 2001. So obviously we can see that this is using the watercolor theme that was very common in Windows Whistler. Some new features include the requirement of a product key while installing. Updates to applications like Internet Explorer is now Microsoft Internet Explorer 6, I believe. They updated it from Internet Explorer 5.6 to Internet Explorer 6. It also comes with Windows Media Player 8 pre-installed, which is updated. This is the new default Windows Whistler wallpaper. Um, I believe this was applied in a previous build. It is now here as default. This is obviously a more interesting version of XP because this theme was not seen in a final build of Windows. So let's take a brief overview of it. This is the start menu and we can see that it does sort of resemble Windows XP with the updated icons, the more programs, having your name at the top, and that kind of thing. It also, from the previous build, drops the name of the operating system, which is previously on the left hand side. The taskbar still sort of does look like Windows Neptune, although it is a little bit different, it's not as gray, and it, it overall just looks a little bit weirder, but that's because this is of course a beta. We can see the new icons, such as the new recycle bin, but also old icons like the file a bug report. My favorite part of this build is of course the brand new top bar. We can see how it is, this is called the Microsoft watercolor theme, it starts off blue into a different gradient with some nice squares and a darker blue. One thing that is bothering me though is how these two buttons are together but this one is separate. I think they should either be all be together or all separate. But other than that, I really do like this theme here, and that is my favorite part of this build. Things mostly resemble Windows XP here. Um, some things are of course different as this is a beta that was announced in the beginning of 2001. This build does actually identify itself as Windows Whistler instead of being identified as 2000. And even if we go into my computer and open properties, we can see that it should Oh no, it does actually identify itself as 2000 in system properties. I guess that is something that they did forget to change. But other than that, we are seeing updated icons. It's sort of a mix of a mess, but overall we are getting closer and closer to XP. So now let's take a look at the next build of XP. And now this is the last beta build of Windows XP that we're taking a look at. This is Windows Whistler or Windows XP build 2462. 
This is an official beta 2 release of Windows XP, which was released to testers on, the, on March 19th. 2001. So overall compared to the last build we can see that this looks so much more like Windows XP. We are missing the profile icon that used to show up up here however that came back in the final release. We can see that we are still running the older version of Windows Media Player although it looks almost the same as the new one. Also we can see that the watercolor theme has been replaced with the Windows XP Luna theme that obviously made it to the final edition. By default the taskbar is unlocked however we can just lock it by doing that and that removes that little top bar. We can see that our activation is still the legacy Windows 9X logo, which uh, just disappeared for some reason. Winver does still identify as Windows Whistler with the old logo, however, my computer does identify as Windows 2000 with this weird orange type tab thing at the top. I don't really know what that's about, although it still does show the old logo. Opening up my computer, I just want to see, yep, it still does have the old logo, but it does have this new side thing that we did see in XP. I do want to show off the lock screen because this is really the first time that we get to see a XP-like lock screen. As you can see, it doesn't look identical. Like, we can see that it does have the same thing on here, but I believe that this did change a little bit in XP. Up here, we can see that it does have the new XP logo, but in the actual operating system, that new XP logo is not really shown. But overall, this is really an interesting version of Windows XP. And now, let's take a look at the release version of XP. And this is the Windows XP that we all know and that we all love. This is Windows XP build 2600 service pack 3 so I know this isn't the actual final build of XP this is service pack 3 but overall there's not really a lot of changes UI wise between the two so of course we do see this I have to log off we do see the XP login screen compared to the Whistler beta 2 login screen where they did move that logo from up here down here and again we just go ahead and click and it welcomes us into the operating system of course, like you would expect, this does identify itself as Windows XP instead of 2000 or Whistler, and even here it does say Microsoft Windows XP. Now again, a ton of people are already familiar with this, so I'm not going to go into too much detail regarding everything inside of this operating system. However, this is really the true version of Windows XP that people got to see and that people got to install on their computers. That was a very interesting development history for the XP operating system. Now, as of the usage in 2021, you obviously can't use XP that much. It is not secure as the support did get cut off, so you can't really use it today. Although I really would if I could. If I could install a modern web browser, which you actually probably could through Kernel X, and I could do all kinds of different things with this operating system to make it modernized, I totally would. If you enjoyed this video, definitely let me know. And what was your favorite build of Windows XP? It doesn't have to be one that I showed here in this video. It can be any build that was released between Windows Neptune and the final build of XP. With that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.